Hello everyone and welcome to a tutorial for Brokerage Plus setup and use. First, we'll start with some requirements uh, when you're connecting to our simulated account. Essentially, all you need is a standard plan to place your own orders through Brokerage Plus or a premium plan in order to do some auto trading. So to simply connect to Brokerage Plus for the simulator, you open up your Brokerage Plus window by clicking new and Brokerage Plus, and then click this connect button right up here and connect to the simulator. As soon as this bar shown right here actually turns green, then you are connected. Now to connect to interactive brokers, let us first open up Trader Workstation and talk about some requirements. First of all, you need an interactive brokers account. If you have foreign cash that you would like to trade in the US markets, you have to first convert that cash into US dollars. Interactive brokers can show you how to do that. You also need an active data plan. Unfortunately, interactive brokers delays their data by default, you have to go to them and purchase a plan for live data because we bring in some of our data from IB and some of our data from other data vendors to make sure they match, to make sure everything is working before placing a trade. So if they have you on delayed data mode still, that can cause some issues. So the first thing to debug if you're having an issue trading with Brokerage Plus is whether or not you are paying interactive brokers for a data plan that should cover everything that you're looking to trade. Also, it's very important to note that currently for Interactive Brokers Lite, they are blocking API connections. So you need an Interactive Brokers Pro account in order to make API trades, which is essentially the way that Brokerage Plus sends orders from our system into Interactive Brokers. Okay, so when you have your Trader Workstation open, installed on the same computer which you are running trade ideas simply find the connection right here this cog will bring open the settings menu to help you get connected clicking that button will open up this particular window where you can actually change all of the settings for all of interactive brokers but we are going to focus on this api section right here and we're going to click on settings so I'm going to leave this up as I speak so you can copy down the settings that you would like to use directly. Important to note the things that I have checked. For example, enable ActiveX, download open orders on connections, prepare daily P&L when downloading positions, expose entire trading schedule to API, as well as this socket port. So note that there is a different port number for both paper and live. We are using 7497 for paper and 7496 for live. So we are going to be doing everything in paper in this video, but everything will transfer over the same way into live. Again, assuming you have an appropriate data plan that you are paying interactive brokers for. Once you have everything copied the way that I have this here, let's go into precautions here as well and note that I have all of these clicked. Essentially what these do is make sure that you're giving the API the ability to place trades without you needing to confirm them. After you've set that up, hit apply and okay. We are now done with Trader Workstation and we can go back to trade ideas. So after we have that all done, we will just hit connect, connect to interactive brokers, and we want to select paper for this or live if we're gonna trade live. Client ID, we leave as zero connect paper, and then connect. Once again, this little connection indicator has clicked and it says connected to interactive brokers. Another thing to note is you cannot connect to paper when this account is live and you cannot connect to live when this account is paper. So you both have to launch Trader Workstation in whichever mode you want to trade along with having that port connected and connecting to trade ideas, either paper or live to make sure we are not sending live orders into paper and paper orders into a live account. Okay, now that we are connected, let's do a little walkthrough of the different tabs within Brokerage Plus. Note you can add and remove any of these tabs that you would like. Clicking the X button to remove and then clicking new and whichever tab you would like to see. 
If you want to load these as individual windows, you can go down to window and load up uh, positions grid. So first, let's take a look at the positions tab. So there's a few things to note here. There's a few main sections we'll go over. First is this particular section here, which shows you today's p &L. I've just entered a paper position here in APY, and it shows what the p &L is on this particular position today, along with open p &L, closed p &L, profit factor, amount of trades, win-loss ratio, a good healthy dose of statistics of how your trading is working for that individual day. If you click on where it says today's p &L, that changes to total p &L, which will be the total that you have open instead of just today's trading action. Here in the cog in the bottom right hand corner, you can see that there are a couple options. You can turn on and off that grid if you don't want to see it. You can turn it off on and off this order grid, the filters up top, and the order buttons on the side. So let's go through all of those now. So everything in Brokerage Plus has this title bar up top where you can filter out different things that you would like to see. So for example, if I wanna take a look at only one of these accounts, either the simulated trading account on Trade Idea side I'm connected to, or the paper account within IB, I can filter that. So we will only see that particular account. I can also filter it by strategy and by open or close position. Over here on the side, these are our quick order entry buttons. Flatten will take any position that you have selected and it will cancel any associated orders, get you out of the trade. Half will cut the position by half, double will double the position, reverse will turn longs into short and vice versa. And limit out will allow you to put limits above and below the market which we will talk about in a moment. These three buttons down here, all long and short, will select different things inside your window. We only have one long trade currently. So if I click long, it will highlight that. If we had multiple long trades, if I click long, it would highlight all of them. Next, let's go into the orders tab. This, you can actually see all the different orders that you have outstanding if you would like to move or cancel them. In the accounts tab, note that this will list the different accounts that you have connected. If in Trader Workstation you have multiple accounts, for example, they will all be listed here. Now you can set up a default account by clicking in this window, right clicking and click mark as default. And now this account will be default so that if I send a trade, it will go to this account. I can do the same thing if I want to turn this to my default account. Any account you would like to have as default, when you set up a new strategy, a trade will go there. Note, in some circumstances, interactive brokers will block this account value from showing up in your screen. Do not worry about it. Nothing within Brokerage Plus uses your account value. Therefore, it doesn't matter that they don't send it to us all of the time. This executions tab will tell you all of the trades that you have taken today. You can see this one trade in APY along with an estimated commission amount based off of interactive brokers commissions. So next is the messages tab. The messages tab is a great way to learn what's going on with your system, why some orders may have gotten filled, why some orders may not. If you're trying to figure out why you did not get a trade, this is a great way to go. So for example, this particular account does not have the market data that we talked about. So it gives me that warning clear as day that there will be problems because I do not have that active data plan. This is also a great way to find out if a order was rejected due to a buying power constraint, a short sell restraint, maybe you just missed the trade and it canceled the order. Again, this is a great way to go through and debug those trades. Now, when it goes to managing current positions before we talk about opening new positions, any position that you have currently open if you highlight and right click, you can see the options for managing new positions. Let's add a stop order here for APY and let's add it at $9.99. You can see it put out a red bar on our chart, noting where our stop is and roughly what the PL would be if that stop got hit. We can grab this on the chart and we can move it to wherever we'd like. And you see in real time that PL is adjusted. Next, if we want to enter a new position, maybe buy more shares, the first way we can take a look at doing it is with the order entry buttons found down below here. Let's buy another 100 shares of APY. So first, note the symbol, and the symbol will update depending on what chart you're looking at. So if we bring up Apple, 
you can see that that updated. If we go back to APY, you can see the symbol here update. Next is the amount of shares we want to purchase. Let's buy another 100 shares, but we can use these quick orders to go and pick an amount or we can just type them in ourselves. Price, it defaults to market. We can type in whatever price we would like. Let's try to get some at $10.36. Next is the stop price, which we'll look at in a second. But for now, let's just buy this. So you can see because I switched my account, the default account that this is traded through is now different. Now let us put out a stop for this trade. We using the same order entry button, we'll go into here and we're gonna make this a stop market. So we will make the price market and we will make the stop price $9.99. And when we put this out, you can see the stop is put there as well. If we wanted to make this a stop limit instead of a stop market, we would just change this from a market to a limit price. Okay, now that we are connected and we understand the basics of trading using Brokerage Plus, as well as managing orders, right clicking to set out stops, we can do the same with time stops, target orders. Now let us go into creating one click order entries. So under the strategies tab, this is where all of your current strategies that you have created are built. Note, this discretionary long and short is not a strategy. These cannot be turned off nor deleted because they are not strategies and will not ever place trades. What these are is accounting lines so that you can quickly and easily see what trades that you have made, i.e. discretionary trades, have done. For example, the APY trades we are in you can see are listed here under discretionary. Again, I just want to repeat, these are not strategies and will not place trades for you. They do not have the ability to do so. So now let us set up a one-click order entry so we can either trade directly from the chart or from any scan that we find within Trade Idea. So let's right-click on the blue part of the menu here and click Create New Trading Strategy. And let's call this one test. So you can see this is broken into tabs. I suggest going from the tabs from left to right, the way they're set up. And by the time you hit the end, you'll have your strategy created. Now, since this is something that we are going to click on ourselves and have traded for us, we're gonna set this up differently than what I'm gonna do in a moment, which is have it traded automatically for us without our intervention. So in this screen, we're gonna pick long because we want this to be a long strategy. We are going to ignore these for now because these are for auto trading strategies. We can go down to accounts and this is where you'll be able to select which account you would like the strategy to go to. Let's leave this default for now. In this next tab, we select when we would want to open orders from. So for example, if you wanted it not to do anything for the first five minutes, you could pick the first five minutes here. And if you didn't want to do any trades after afternoon, you can put those in as well. But again, since we are order putting in these orders ourselves, I'm going to expand it out for the entire day. And I would like to send orders even when holdings exist. It's important to read these and know whether or not you want them turned on. Essentially, this top one says you only want to trade that symbol once per day. This middle one says you want to still trade even if holdings exist, if you own this stock and you would like to buy more. This is how many times you would like to get trades done before it stops trading for you. And this is a custom route to use. Note these are more important for auto trading strategies, which we'll get to in a minute, than they are for one click order entry. Next is the order detailed. For position sizing, we have three options dollars, shares, and based off stop loss. Dollars as in I would like to buy $3,000 of this company. Shares, I would like to buy 100 shares of this company. And based on stop loss, I would like to risk $50. What will happen here is Trade Ideas will calculate what it believes your entry price will be and roughly what your stop loss that you have programmed in the system will be and it will calculate the share size to take based off those two so that if that gets hit, you will risk roughly $50. Next is the actual order that will be sent out. 
I highly recommend limit orders as market orders can certainly get you in trouble in fast moving markets or e-liquid stocks, but you can do market orders as well. Time and force is how long you would like the order to stay out there before being canceled if not filled. You can do good to cancel, which means it will stay out there forever. Good till day, which means it will be canceled at some point during this trading day, and then you can customize how many minutes you would like this to be out before it is canceled. Next is your limit offset down here. So this limit offset is how aggressive you want the ordering to be. And I'm going to speak on this for just a moment because it is confusing for a lot of our new customers but essentially don't look at this as a long versus short thing this is completely agnostic to whether or not the position is a long position or the position is a short position a limit offset the more negative you go the more aggressive your order is the more positive you go the more passive your order is for example apy is trading at ten dollars and 32 cents if i want to send out an order to buy apy at ten dollars and 42 cents or lower i'm going to give myself up to 10 cents of possible slippage i would put in minus zero spot one zero this is allowing me to pay up 10 cents over what APY is trading. Now, if I was to short APY using the same limit offset, it would send out a short order for $10.22. So again, the more negative the number, the more aggressive your order, both long and short. Next is the risk management tab. This top option, use last price as a reference for placing exit orders. Essentially, this is whether or not you would like it to calculate where to put your stop loss based off what it thinks you will get filled at or the last price of the stock. This is important for people that are putting in large limit offsets on fairly cheap stocks as it can skew where the stop loss order is in. I suggest leaving this ticked. So here are our risk management options. We have stop loss, target, trailing stop. First thing to note is do not place both a stop loss and a trailing stop. There's a few reasons for this, but the main one is there's no benefit to doing this. It will either get stopped out or it won't. Adding two stop losses can create problems when it comes to the broker thinking that you're trying to short the position by buying 100 shares and putting out two 100 share sell orders. It can also get you double filled and reverse your position. If you put out two stop loss orders for 200 shares for your 100 share order, the stock can move quickly down and trigger both stop losses before a chance to cancel is had. Now, when it comes to order types, we have three types. We have percentage, dollars, filters. Percentage meaning I would like to put the stop 5% away from price. Dollars being, I would like to put the stop $1 away from price. And filter is I'm going to use a filter that we have built in, like the smart stop. Now this is a bit advanced, but important to note, whatever you use as a filter needs to output a dollar amount that will be subtracted from price for long trades and added to price for short trades. So for example, if it is a $10 stock and your formula output is nine dollars then it is going to put a stop loss out at a dollar a share if it's a short trade and the stock is ten dollars and your formula output is nine dollars it's going to put out a stop loss at nineteen dollars a share so it is very important that you use a dollar amount not a percentage amount and that that you understand that that dollar amount will be added to or subtracted from price for example Let's look at the above low filter. We're going to use above low in dollars and understand that what will happen, for example, if the stock is trading at $10 and the low is $9.50, then the above low filter will output 50 cents. So this is okay for a stop loss filter because it will take the price of the stock and it will subtract 50 cents and that is the value that it will get 
for the stop. So it will send out a stop order at $9.50. Again, note that it is outputting a number and that number needs to be subtracted from price. Now, when it comes to target, the same options apply. Percent, dollars, filters. This will be added to price. So again, if you have one that is expressed in a large dollar amount, it's going to put that above price. And if you're short, it will put it below price. Lastly, in this screen is our hold time. And this is when we would like to exit the position. We can select none. We can hold it for a number of minutes from our fill time, or we can exit at a certain time of the day. Down here, we could exit at market open or close multiple days from today. We'll click OK, and now we see that test has popped up here. OK, now that we have finished and we've created test, I can right click anywhere in Trade Ideas, in any scan, or on any chart, and I can click Trade, and I can buy using test. Now this will buy the stock, and then immediately put the stop at the low of the day. You can see it's trying to get filled here, although it is after hours. And you can see it has purchased us the stock and it put out the stop loss and it's calculated its position size of 20 shares so that if I get stopped out at the price I requested, I lose the $50 that I requested, of course, plus or minus slippage in fast moving markets. Okay, now that we have set that up, and we, if we want to take trades directly from the chart, we can right click and we can click set as default chart long strategy. When we do this, we can now use these buy and sell buttons right here on our chart. So if we want to buy save, for example, we can click on that buy button. You see that my cursor has now changed into a cross. I can put it wherever I would be interested in buying this stock. And what has happened is it's put out a stop limit order so that if the stock rises to this price, it will get me in. And it has a stop loss order in place that will get activated when this is filled. Now, if I would like to do a purchase below the current price, I can click under the price and you can see it put out both the limit order and if the stock falls back to hit this limit, it will put out the stop order here. Also note that this is going to apply to this test strategy. So things like your position size and hold time will apply to these buttons. It is a great way to set up a complete trading plan with two clicks of the mouse. Next, let us look at adding an algorithm that will completely trade for you. So for example here, say you've built a back test in an alert window and it's something that you like, and it's something that you would like to have traded for you, simply grab the alert window that you would like to trade, right click and click save or share to cloud, and then click save. That puts this particular strategy in your cloud. Now go into the strategies tab of Brokerage Plus, right click and click load from cloud, Find the alert window that you will need to add. Note that you can only add alert windows at this time and click load. You'll be given some options here to replace all existing strategies. This will of course replace every strategy that we have, so be careful with that. You can add to existing strategy and you can also replace by name. So if you have a strategy of the same name you would like to overwrite, you can do this like this. So let us add an existing strategy. Right click and click edit, and we can see all of the settings here. So this last back test that I ran that I just showed you guys will show up here with all of the settings from that last back test. So get the back test the way you like, and then you can add this in. If not, you will just need to adjust the parameters the way I showed you with the one click order entry. So you can see here, you could configure the strategy now right from this window if you would like. Again, the accounts tab, works the same as the other one. When it comes to entry time, again, it will pull from the back test, but you can modify this as you would like. These become more relevant now that you're gonna have this auto trading, this stop sending or filling after 10 orders will either stop after it's attempted 
to take 10 trades or stop after it has gotten filled on 10 trades. When it comes to your order details, nothing has changed here. It's the exact same, how would you like to trade it? So for example, if you want it to risk a certain amount on every trade, you can do that. Again, same with shares and dollars. Risk management is the same. It will pull this over from your back test if your back test has risk management parameters in it. Mine had not, so nothing was filled in here. And then hold time, this was pulled in from the back test as well. You can modify it here and click OK. Note that every morning you're going to have to come in and enable this strategy by clicking either right clicking on the strategy, click to enable, or you can highlight multiple strategies and enable them by clicking this button here and then disable them by clicking this button here. So let us enable these. You can see they all turn on. They will now trade. If you disable strategies, they will turn off and no further trades will happen. Note that on order entry, all orders are immediately sent to the broker and managed there. If you need to adjust an order or if there's a disconnect between the two platforms, note that you can always go to interactive brokers and manage your trades there. Lastly, let's take a look at the AI auto trader for those with permissions to do so. Open up your AI trading tab. You'll see all of the strategies that Holly has selected and queued up for today here. You can right click and get your order entry criteria. Let's set up the long trading instructions here. Now for these long trading instructions, a lot of this will be familiar from what we've covered already in this video, i.e. account, position sizing, dollars, shares, stop loss, order entry, limit or market, as well as limit offset and how long you would like the orders to remain out. Now what is different in this particular mode is the AI trading mode. Currently it is set to moderate. Moderate is the ability for the AI to take the trade, put out the stop loss on that trade, and then it holds the trade without any intervention until the end of the day. Conservative mode is using the AI's trailing stop metric so that it will get out of trades early if it looks like they're gonna reverse. The best of conservative and moderate essentially will look at what's working best at this time and that the next trade that goes out will use the mode that is working best at this time. It will not modify currently running trades. Personally, I suggest running in moderate mode if you have the ability to manage the trades yourself as it gives more flexibility for the trader to try to pick when to scale out of positions or exit positions based off what's happening during that trading day. Let's save this for re-entry trades, which is if the AI gets stopped out and wants one additional try at that trade. Short and short re-entry, the settings are the same. Note that every morning you will need to click enable and turn on any and all trading strategies that you would like. Also, you can enable re-entries long and short through here, whether or not you would like the AI to take that second shot at those trades. So that is the setup for Brokerage Plus. We highly suggest that until you fully understand this complex program, that you start in a paper trading mode while you make sure all of your settings are correct and you get a feel for it just to make sure that you are not risking real money while you are learning this new way of trading.